Well, that figures. Yeah, that's much better. This is the Jackery 2000 Pro solar generator. Power supply suitable for camping, keeping some power on in your home when the power is out. And today I thought we would really put it to the test, making a little CampX using just the Jackery 2000 Pro as our power supply for all of our forging needs. And I'll talk more about this later in the video, but let's get started on our project. This is going to be a small, lightweight camp axe. I'm starting with a piece of 01 tool steel that is 3 quarters by 1 inch, or that's about 20 millimeters by 25 millimeters. I'll cut a piece 4 inches long. That's about 100 millimeters long. On a small axe like this, you don't have a lot of room to correct an eye that is a little bit off-center. So I prefer to go ahead and lay out where I want the eye, center punch it, and then drill either side just the right size for the punch I'm going to use to punch out the eye. And that really helps guarantee that you can get your eye right where you want it. I go ahead and mark and drill from both sides so that the hole can meet in the middle. I start by establishing a good mark for the punch so I can make sure it's going in the right place. Then I'll get more aggressive as I go. Make sure you keep your punch cool and a little bit of punch lube doesn't hurt.
going to start opening this up with the punch and then we'll switch to an actual drift.
I'm going to let that cool down with the forge, take a little lunch break, then we'll get back to work on this. This provides a great opportunity to try out Jackery's solar charging option using the solar panel that they sent along with this. So after leaving this for an hour and a half on that single solar panel system, we're up to about 92%. So that's not bad. And we haven't really drained this very much with all the work I've been doing in the shop, running the forge blower consistently. And it's still got plenty of power. I wouldn't need to charge this throughout the day for what I'm doing with it right now. And I would like to thank Jackery for sponsoring today's video and sending this out for us to take a look at. This model is the Jackery Explorer 2000 Pro. It has three AC outlets on the front, two USB-A out outlets, two USB-C outlets. It has a conventional 12-volt style cigarette lighter plug, and that way you can run regular 12-volt stuff that you might use in a car or a camp or something like that. It has its own built-in light. It has a low, a high, and an SOS signal. The continuous draw on this is 2200 watts. It does have some surge capacity, so it will take a little bit higher load. But that Wilton square wheel grinder wanted to run at 2800 watts continuously, and that's just a little bit overkill for this. On the other hand, the newer, bigger model of this, the 3000 Pro, would probably run that grinder just fine. As far as charging this goes, it will charge fully in about two and a half hours plugged into the wall. It does come with a wall cord so you can charge it off normal AC power. It takes about two and a half hours to charge it that way. It also comes with a 12 volt cigarette lighter style plug so you can charge it off your car. Don't think I'd charge it off my car with the engine not running, but if you were driving from place to place, you could plug this in and keep the battery topped off. And a full charge that way would take about 24 hours, so that's something you probably wouldn't do all the time. Now the solar panels that we were looking at just a few minutes ago, six of those units will charge this in two and a half hours, so that's really good charging. You'd be able to get a lot of work done if you had the solar panel set up to this, and we're just using it. this as the power source and the solar panels. And then this provides you power after dark when the sun goes down. And two of those solar panels will charge in about seven and a half hours. They just sent me one, so that's more like 15 hours. But like today, I'm not using this all the way down, so a few hours in the sun is really all it would take. And I've left the panel out in the sun all day. I would probably hardly deplete this at all because that is enough power to keep this thing charged up. And for charging this, there are two DC in ports where you plug it into the solar panels, and it has the AC in port, so you can charge it either way. And the car would plug in back here if you were using the car charger. Now solar panels are super easy to set up. They just have a magnetic closure, so you just open that like a suitcase, and that exposes the solar panels. Little Velcro legs on the back that are attached so you're not going to lose them, and that sets this at just the ideal angle for the sun most of the year. Pre-wired to plug into the main unit, and you can buy an extension cable for this so you can put it further away. I also noticed that the input for this cable has a USB-C and a USB-A port on it. So you could actually charge your electronic devices right off the solar panels. And in that situation, you probably don't even have to plug them in to the battery bank. As I said, this is the Explorer 2000 Pro. There's a larger flagship model, the 3000 Pro, out. And that's just been released to Canada. So if you're one of the Canadian viewers, it's now available in Canada. And if you use the link in the coupon code in the video description, you can get a $499 Canadian discount on that unit. And of course, everybody else can use that link as well. I'm just not sure if you get a discount if you're here in the US. And there are European versions of this available. So if you're not in North America, you can go to the European version of the website and you get one of the appropriate power outlets for where you live. But for now, let's plug this back into the KMG grinder and do some grinding on our little axe head.
This is a new larger touch mark that I hope is ideally suited for doing axes. After normalizing, I'm going to start bringing this up to heat by heating the back end where everything is thicker and heavier, and that way I can get a more even heat on it. After quenching, I'll quickly shine up the blade with a flat disc and watch the colors run. I want to take this to a nice bronze color, maybe starting to be a little purple. You can see the tempering colors back up in here, and that's starting to run a little there. I may have to quench this corner off. Sometimes this can take quite a while, but slower is better than too fast. Kind of a dark straw now. I quenched everything with this corner. That's uh, not as hot. The heat's not traveling up there the way I want, so I want to stop this, but I would like a little bit more heat there. Then we'll quench the whole thing.
Well, that came out pretty good. I think it's time to put a handle on it. And I'm going to go ahead and keep using the Jackery system to power the tools that I use for the handle. So far, it's only down to 81%. But if I need to put the solar charger back on it and set it out in the sun, we can do that too. For finish, I'm using a 50-50 mix of pine tar and linseed oil. I let that sit for about an hour and then I wipe off the excess.
Well, that completes a little Camp X. Generally, I'm pretty darn happy with it, although I got a little bit carried away on the eye. That eye ended up big enough for an axe two or three times the size. Not going to hurt anything, just a little bit of overkill. But it is a nice little axe. It looks really practical for camp use and things like that. So I think this is one I'm actually going to keep. Even got a nice little leather sheath to protect the edge. And all of the electricity used for the tools that help make this axe were provided by the Jackery solar power generator. This won't run everything that I have in the shop, but it ran enough tools and equipment to get this project done. I didn't have to cheat and go plug something into the wall just to do a little task or anything like that. It was easy enough to adapt to the tools this wants to work. The things that didn't work were that Wilton square wheel grinder with a big one horse motor. That thing's more than 30 years old, and I'm sure it doesn't start as smooth as it used to. It would not run the bandsaw down in the basement wood shop, so I used the little porta band, and that worked just fine for this. It would be interesting to try with one of the older little flux core welders that runs on 110, just to see what this would be capable of doing with that. But I don't own one of those, and it's really not that big a deal. Now the need for me to come into the shop and work on the power out is somewhat limited. It does happen a few times a year, and this will run the blower on the new ribbon burner forge, and I can get some work done using this. But the real use I see for this is while we're working on the cabin project up the hill, this will run the chargers for all the cordless tools, it will run corded handheld power tools, and it will run some lights up there. Heck, we could even take the electric coffee pot up there and make a pot of coffee while we're working if we want to. So this is going to see a lot of use on that project later this summer. Now for full disclosure, I did go ahead and run the lights in the shop so I had lights to make the video look better off of the regular wall power. I think there's nine different lights in here, and they're all plugged into their own receptacles, and I would have had to find a whole bunch of extension cords and splitters and things like that to run over to this. I'm sure it would have run all those because they're all LEDs, they're relatively low wattage lights, but it just seemed like an unrealistic test because if I was working up here in those circumstances, I'd only need one or two lights. I wouldn't need all the lights I use for videos. But other than that, we were able to run a chop saw, the drill press, the KMG grinder, the porta band, the drill press down in the basement, the forge blower. And the thing that really blew my mind is this ran that 25 pound little giant. I think that's only got like a three quarter horse motor on it. It's a little underpowered, but it was able to run that. And that was really very impressive. So again, I'd like to thank Jackery for sending this out to take a look at. If you ever want to send out that larger version, I'd be really interested to see if the 3000 Pro would run some of those tools that this wouldn't run. And having something like that set up at the cabin would be an ideal power source up there, not just for building it, but when people come to visit. Anyways, this may be one of the longest videos I've ever made. If you stuck around this long, Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, I would love it if you hit that subscribe button down there. Stick around, watch a few of the other videos, share the videos with your friends, but then make time in your day to get out to your shop. Make something. Stay safe. Wear your safety glasses. We'll see you for the next video.